What are the essential things you need in order to reach a challenging goal? Well, there are several of them, but most people overlook one of the most important ones, knowing exactly where you are right now. In this video, I'll show you five ways to get clear on where you are so that you know what you need to work on in order to play your best every time. Now, if you want to get somewhere else, the first thing you need to know is exactly where you're starting from. And in order to do that in terms of music, you need feedback. And getting and then acting on really good feedback is one of the things that separates the best musicians from the others. But unfortunately, a lot of musicians don't actually spend a lot of time doing this or even thinking about how to do it. And they consequently just don't get that feedback and just really not sure where they're starting from. So let's look at five ways that you can actively set out to get feedback that's going to help you get to where you want to go. Now, the first way that you can deliberately give yourself great feedback on where you are is to have a very specific black and white goal when you're practicing. And this is probably the easiest way to get into this because you don't need any other musicians, you don't need to be in a particular situation. Anytime you're practicing, you can just set things up so that you get definite feedback unambiguous feedback on what you're doing. You do need to know exactly what you're working on though, because this is what it's all about with the black and white goal. It's not looking at yourself in practice and saying, am I happy with that? Did I play well? It's about having one very specific thing that you're tracking and it's so clear that you can always say very definitely, yes, I did it or no, I didn't do it. There's no uncertainty there. Now, if you want to know a little bit more about this, uh, you can check out a video I did on practice that includes some tips on this. But basically what you're doing is looking to define something where there's just a yes or no answer to did it happen. So it might be, did I hit a specific note? Did I play the very first beat of the phrase exactly on the first beat of the bar? Something where it's not about, was it good or not in a creative sense? but where it's a very clear, if I did it this way, that's correct. If I did it that way, it's not correct. And this is not to get down on yourself if you didn't do it like that. It's just to give you that very definite feedback. Am I doing this or not? And when you do do this, you will want to cycle through lots of things because the way that this works is that you can't pay attention to 50 different things where it's like I want these all to be exactly like that at once and no did you do them all that's where you're going to sink into well overall I was pretty happy with that but I missed a few things so what you're going to want to do there is work out well what is it that I'm checking here let's just focus on that one thing and let the others slide for the moment and just make sure I can get really clear well did I do that or not what is that feedback am I at that place where I thought I am or hoped I was going to be or does it need more work so that's the first one. And the second way to deliberately give yourself feedback is to record yourself and listen back later. And this is fantastic objective feedback because the tape just doesn't lie. It takes a little bit more effort than just giving yourself a black and white goal, but it is again something that you can do totally on your own in practice. But I should say it's a great thing to do when you're actually performing as well. And one of the reasons why this is such a good thing to do is because you will literally hear differently when you're listening back to the recording later. Because there is so much brain power required in playing music that you physically can't give your full attention to listening because so much of your, um, your brain's functioning is dealing with actually making the music in the first place. But that changes once you're sat down afterwards with a cup of tea or whatever you like, listening back to the recording, you can give it your full attention and you will hear things that you couldn't hear when you were playing in the moment. But again, actually to get into all the details, there's so much information in sound coming at us that you will want to listen back multiple times, listening for slightly different things each time. So maybe one time you're looking at how was my phrasing? Another time you're looking at how was my rhythm? All those sorts of things. You can give it different passes, focus on different things each time and you'll see different stuff. And again, if you'd like to go more into this, you can check out my video on why you should be recording yourself more often for more detail on that. Now, a third great way to get feedback on where you are and on your playing 
is to go and see a teacher. Now, obviously, this has the great advantage of it's, it's someone external who's looking at you from the outside, who can give you a different perspective. And they're very skilled. They've spent a lot of time working on this, understanding these things. But even more than that, they have that great advantage that they will have seen lots of students come through in the years. And so not only are they know what to look for, but they know where you stand relative to other people in a similar situation. So even if there are things that you need to work on, they might tell you, well, yes, but everyone needs to work on this, not something to be worried about. Or depending on where you are, you might, you might get the other thing. And they, they might say, well, actually, all these people who are at a similar level to you, 90% of them have this down that you do not. So that can be fantastic feedback on, well, where do you stand next to other people in a similar position? And the other reason why feedback from a teacher can be really important is because they know which strengths and weaknesses are more important to work on than others. And that's both in general, there are some things that are just more useful in music than others in that huge myriad of the thousands, millions of things we could be working on. But again, if you, if you know what your goals are and you can tell your teacher this, they will then be able to say, well, okay, this thing over here, it is great for a lot of people, but for your specific goals, it's this bit that you need to work on. So not just general feedback, but feedback very specific to you and what you want to achieve. And the fourth way to get feedback is to just ask your fellow musicians. Now, this can be a little bit harder than some of the other ones. It's not something you can just do sat at home in your practice room. And it does help if you're actually out playing with them and you can ask them on the spot. But it's not impossible that you could make a recording, like we said earlier, send it to them and, and just ask for some feedback. And this allows you to get a whole variety of different perspectives. And from people who, who have seen your playing in, hopefully, all these different performance situations. And it'll be very interesting to see what they focus on, which might be very different from you. One thing that you do want to watch out for here, though, is that people have a tendency to want to be pretty nice about things. They don't generally want to say things that are going to hurt or that you're going to find difficult. So you may need to do some work up front to convince them that you are looking for some objective feedback and find a way to get them to say what they really think rather than perhaps be a little sugar coating of, uh, of what they say to you. And if you're not in an environment where your kind of group of musicians are constantly asking each other for feedback, then this might be something where you find it a little bit uncomfortable to ask in the first place. But that's something you're going to have to get over. And I promise you the insights you'll get into your playing and quite possibly the encouragement as well will be well worth any discomfort you have to go through. And the fifth and final recommendation I've got for you today is just to get out there and play with other musicians in a variety of different contexts and notice what happens. Keep an eye on what you found harder than you thought you would, what didn't go well that you thought would be fine. But conversely, what's the other things? What are the things you thought you would struggle with, but actually they, they went pretty well? Or you thought other musicians wouldn't be that impressed with what you do, but they're really happy with the way you've played. And the reason why this can be really useful is that you will be put in a variety of different situations that you wouldn't have chosen to put yourself in, whether that's just the music, the different settings that people are playing in, or just the way that they play means that you have to react in different ways or things go a slightly different way than expected. This is all stuff that you probably are not going to find out when you're just practicing at home or just playing in the same context all the time. So you just simply might not be aware of things that you struggle with or again, things that you've done better than you, you thought you might. And it does take a bit more effort than the other ways of doing it. You have to find people to play with. You have to actually get out there and make the time to do it. But again, I think it's another really valuable perspective on where you are and what you might want to work on in the future. So there you go, five different ways that you can get feedback on your playing. And I think it's a really great idea to use several of them because this is going to give you different perspectives, different views. And with that, you can kind of triangulate, well, where exactly does it work for me? 
But the most important thing for you to do is to actually take action and put some of them into practice. So for that, I would suggest you just pick one to get started with and commit to doing that rather than trying to think, oh, I've got to do all of them. So I'd love to know, just let me know in the comments below, which one are you going to start with? And if you have any other suggestions for ways to get feedback on your playing, I'd love to hear those as well. So drop me a comment too. I've been Mark Morley Fletcher. Thanks so much for watching. Please click below to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And while you're down there, why not hit the share button to pass this on to other musicians? Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.